We are in Naperville, Illinois today on this gray day, and we are doing a drive-by by the home of what was the residence of Marilyn and David Lemack. And on March 4th, 1999, this is the house where Marilyn Lemack murdered her three children. And we're going to head over to the cemetery and talk more about it. I'm at the Naperville Cemetery. This is a very old cemetery. And it's a beautiful framed road here of very old trees. And I'm here to pay respects to the three Lemac children who were murdered by their mother. All right, we're in. This is the Friedli Mausoleum. Some beautiful sphinxes with the claws. Two serpents. Beautiful stained glass inside. This is the crypt of Christina and August Springborn. August was born November 3rd, 1864 and passed in 1937. Christina's wife. What is interesting about this structure is the roof and the walls are made of stone. They're like stone stone shingles. I can't say I've ever seen that before. It's a very interesting structure. So walking along here on our way to find the grave of the three children, Emily, Thomas, and Nicholas, Lemack children, the story goes that the mother, Marilyn, Marilyn was a nurse, and she met her husband, David, who was a doctor. He was an emergency room doctor at Hinsdale Hospital nearby here. When they had Emily, their second child, Marilyn was going through some type of depression which we hear about childbirth with with sometimes women have uh, they go through a whole depression stage which is i think hormones here's a oh here's a child here our adam david miller adam david miller was born july 14th 2003 and passed November 15th, 2008. Okay, gang, we're going to freeze it here. A little research done during editing and found out that this was a car accident. Little Adam didn't have a chance. He was sitting in a the car. The car was disabled, and according to other drivers, it was lit up like a Christmas tree on the side of the road. But we had one man who dropped his cigar, really didn't care, his car plowed into Adam's car. He was killed instantly. And very sadly, the, uh, the guy didn't even get n nothing but a couple of traffic tickets. Here we are with the judges again. 
And he wasn't even remorseful, according to Adam Miller's mother, Cheryl. So she fought for new legislation down in Springfield, their capital, and lawmakers have changed the law for distracted drivers. So that's in Adam's name. It looks like there's a drawing that they transferred here. I'm sure that was one of Adam's Adam's little sketches. It's cute. Uh, we have a sunshine and a star. It doesn't look like anyone's been here for a while. To see Adam. Well, they had the, the depression. Uh, Maryland had depression. And that's where the marital problems really were starting also. Years later, they had little Thomas and uh, I think things were reaching ahead there because there was apparently an, an affair going on I think with the marital problems the uh, husband David he didn't uh, he had an affair going on and not cool but it was happening he was seeing a woman named Janice Ryan and he eventually married her after all this after all this uh, happened but at the time he had moved out of the house that we saw there Marilyn was living there with the three kids in a depressed state it happened so that she saw one of the cars from the actually it was David's car parked in front of Janice's house and I guess that just set her off. One of the neighbors had seen her the day that it happened and saw that Marilyn was in an extreme depressed state and offered to take the children and give her a rest and she was met with an abrupt no. And what happened was Marilyn took the kids she started with the two younger ones, Emily and Thomas, and she gave them sedatives, aspirin mixed with sedatives that were prescription drugs, and put them, basically put them to sleep. And then she suffocated them with her hand while she read them or she sang lullabies really uh, terrible be because obviously the act was terrible but it was calculated and it was all about revenge and spite against her husband it was just hate how can I hurt him and uh, just the selfishness and meanness and evilness to kill the kids to get back at the husband. That's what this was about. Neville N. Yates, 1939 to 2016. Uh, Neville was into flying. Looked like a great guy. Lived a great life doing what he loved to do. Chen, husband and wife. Father lived a long time, 2017. His wife died in 93. So then after she killed the two kid the two little ones she waited for Nicholas to come home he came home and all he could think about was playing with his toys she told him that her brother his brother and sister were not around as she gave him a peanut butter sandwich laced with the drugs and then of course when he passed out she killed him by suffocating him. 
She put the boys in her bed, in their beds, tucked them in, and took the dead little girl, Emily, her daughter, to her bed and went to, you know, laid down next to her and Uh, 1960 to 2008. Lee, it says Lee MD. Beautiful couple. So she took Emily to bed with her, dead Emily. Her body tucked her in with her. And then Marilyn took the same drug cocktail and uh, passed out, except there was nobody to suffocate Marilyn. So Marilyn woke up the next day in a stupor and proceeded to, I, I'm not sure about the facts, so either she slit her wrist that night uh, when she killed the kids or she slit her wrists and then called 911. But she called 911 and had this crazy conversation. You can look it up with the 911 dispatcher about what happened. Of course, she blamed her husband for everything. It was his fault. And they came and took her away. Of course, they found the kids. And it was very sad because David came got the word at Hinsdale Hospital, he just gotten to work and came flying over there, drove his car, car on the lawn, broke the barricades and they tackled him and brought him to a squad and they said, don't go inside. Don't go inside, kids are dead. It's a very sad story. The When I was doing the um, the prior video about Brian Dugan and the Carrico murder, I met with the Naperville Police Department researching that, and I did talk to uh, one of the desk officers, actually he was in the front, and I was we were talking about, and he's the one who suggested I do a video on this case. He told me that when they brought Marilyn Lee Mack in, she walked right by him, and she he stared she was just staring right through him. He said those black eyes, there was nothing behind those eyes. It was a blank stare. Really eerie. Katie Catherine Jane Stewart was born June 2nd, 1975, and she passed away June, January 13th, 1995. I wonder what happened. Beautiful woman. She was uh, not even 20. So there was the trial. Of course, the cowardly way out is to plead insanity, so that was her defense. Another uh, young person here. Young man, handsome young man, Brian, nicknamed Bobo. Brian was born November 12th, 1988, and he passed uh, June 11th in 2011. Boy, that's so young. I wonder, I wonder what happened to Brian. Tragic. Glass. No regrets. No regrets. Here's a picture with his uh, wife, I'm sure. Boy, you, you look at these people, some of them, and it's full of life, maybe at the prime of their life. And...
This is a, appears to be a shared grave or monument, shared monument. So she used the insanity defense. She didn't win out on that. She lost. She was put away in the clink forever. No chance of getting out. She's still there now. This was just over 20 years ago. It happened on March 4th, 1999. Now they were just talking about this last year, 20 year anniversary. Here's a young man, another young man, another young person taken early. I see drumsticks. Uh, this whole monument is a drum. It's really, in really nice. Let's see if the name, his name is here, yes, on this side. Uh, in loving memory of Craig Garber, I think it is. I can't really, it's hard to read with the, the glare. Son, brother, uncle, and friend. I'm sure he was a musician, a drummer. Uh, taken early. Another one taken early. So... That's really the story on Marilyn Lemack, a woman who was scorned, who just wanted to hurt her husband, break him, rather than kill him, kill the children. It's terrible. Uh, the kids are up here, right up here. Lemack. Now they're buried next to Bev and Harry. Harry was in the service. Harry was a World War II pilot. Never to be forgotten, it says. Nicholas, Emily, and Thomas. Nicholas was born, he was the first one born, the oldest, seven years old, June 12th, 1991. They say Nicholas wanted to be a police officer and he would dress up as a cop. What would he have done? Would he have solved a big case? Would he have saved people? I'm sure of it. Emily uh, was born next in 1992 in December, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Look at that. I didn't know that. Emily was an artist. She loved artwork. She was very creative. And little Thomas, he only made it to three. May 5th, 1995, and they were all killed on March, March 4th, 1999. Thomas' dad said, was the happiest kid he ever encountered. Thomas just loved the experiences of the day, always had a big smile. He was loving life, and, and that's all his dad, his, his, his biggest memory. Happy kid, good boy. Well, it's, uh, it's a sad, sad story, everybody. It's a, it's a sad story. But I stand here and uh, Nicholas, Emily, Thomas, we hope you're resting in peace.